Hey everybody, Sean here and I hope you're doing well. And special thanks to Mark Scott for sharing this. If you're not familiar with Justin Paul Abraham, this is his Facebook page. And one of his teachings is on supernatural transportation. Now, while we do have the one example of Philip being supernaturally transported by the Spirit of the Lord in Acts 8, this doesn't mean that we can teach people how to do that. If we could, then God would have told us how in the Bible. And we see he's got special guest Michael Van Vlyman for this topic. Remember him? The guy that personally met the Apostle Philip and also teaches how to spirit travel. We can see that he's a future gazer and a bliss theologian, whatever that means, and teaches how to experience angelic beings, always about the experience with this crowd. He also has other strange teachings like guardian angel guided meditation. His main site is called Company of Burning Hearts. And if we click on the About Us tab, we read that he's the founder and co-director of COBH Limited in the UK. He's a futurist, transformational coach, popular speaker and author known for his joy-filled expanding teachings on Kainos New Creation Realities, meditation and union prayer. Absolutely nothing about Jesus or Christianity mentioned. But that's because this page says that he's a false prophet and just another New Age mystic that claims to be Christian. He's also done shows with Liz Wright. Remember her? We did a video with her and Brian Simmons speaking about Holy Spirit conscious awareness. Birds of a feather, my friends. So in the video we'll look at today, we shouldn't be surprised at how he's introduced. He's one of the people I consider to be one of the foremost mystics in the world today, which is not a small statement because I know a whole lot of mystics. Mystics are people involved with mysticism, which is defined as the practice of religious ecstasies, religious experiences during alternate states of consciousness together with whatever ideologies, ethics, rites, myths, legends, and magic may be related to them. This has also been translated into seeking biblical ecstasy by people like John Crowder. And this is also tied into the craving for experience and feelings as we see so much of in the New Apostolic Reformation today or people like him teaching nonsense like how to ascend to heaven. Once again, if that was something we could or were supposed to do, then God would have explained how to in the Bible. In this crazy video, he defines repentance like this. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Father. Do we pray? Yeah, we did, Do we did, didn't we? God help us. Let's pray it one more time. God help us. What a terrible mess we're in. <laughs> it's all a big joke to these people. What a shame. It's time for a generation to repent. And repentance is a sustained change of thinking about how reality functions. Repentance is a sustained change of thinking about the nature of reality. So we need to repent, which means return to the pent up. The gimbal is the pent up. It's the, it's the burst in supply of heaven. So repentance means return to the burst in supply. Pent so we need to go back, return. It's interesting that it's got the word re, which means it's where we came from. Because you can only return to somewhere you've come from. So repentance means to return to your authentic origin. What a bunch of malarkey. This is as whack as Bill Johnson talking about returning to the penthouse. Biblical repentance has nothing to do with returning to your authentic origin or returning to anything. The Greek word is metanoia and means a change of mind. That is about sin and the things of this world versus God's way. But these mystics get all spacey with their meanings. So let's take a listen to a bit more from this guy. I'm like one of these people that I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing now at all. 
but I got wrecked by the ecstasy of the gospel, the ecstasy of the cross, the Trinitarian dance. The Trinitarian dance? Well, that's a new one. And the first time I ever had this power encounter with God, his presence came in the room, and I actually, I actually passed out. It was so strong. I didn't know that could happen, that you could actually fall asleep because God's presence comes so strong. Mm -hmm. So I didn't tell anyone for a whole year that this happened. I later read, you know, Adam fell asleep, Daniel, John fell asleep. Adam fell asleep because God put him to sleep when he took one of Adam's ribs to make Eve. Daniel fell asleep because he was a chosen prophet of God and God was revealing the future to him. And John fell asleep when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that was because he was tired, not for the reasons Justin just said. Sometimes when you go into a deep, realm of beauty and wonder your body can't handle it mm -hmm. and I woke up and I hear this incredible sound roaring sound a real sound not imaginary it frightened me it was like sparks flying banging clanging wheels turning and I was thinking what's going on and then the Lord's voice was there and he said you're gonna find me always with the overdramatic experience and hearing God's audible voice with this crowd. You're going to find me. And what I found was that he was everywhere. I at first thought that meant I was going to have encounter after encounter. What I discovered was something bigger, bigger than encounters that we're all in. A cosmic, celestial, ecstatic encounter called life and I did find him in everything in the atmosphere in the people's eyes in the food we eat in the clothes we wear in the bed we lie down in is all part of this Trinitarian beautiful ecstatic dance throughout space and time and then I learned to live in that this is panentheism which is basically theism and that God is the supreme being combined with pantheism and that God is everything. While pantheism says that God and the universe are coextensive, panentheism claims that God is greater than the universe and that the universe is contained within God. God is everything in the universe, but also greater than the universe. And that's why he's saying God is in everything, including the food we eat and the clothes we wear. Think about that the next time you eat a pizza. But this is not biblical at all. The Bible presents God as holy, sovereign, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, self-existent, eternal, immutable, perfect, and infinite. None of these attributes are compatible with panentheism. God transcends all of his creation and is in no way limited or changed by events in his creation. But this space age teaching is being mixed into Christianity more and more in these last days. Read your Bibles, my friends, and know God's truth for yourself. We're going to leave it here for today, but feel free to leave your thoughts below. And until next time, take care and God bless.